crowd. Here we go, folks. Okay, we are here together, gathered for the John Lavinia Success Mastermind group session, 2nd of November 2021, 2nd of November already. We've just been talking to Gail and saying our prayers for her to hope she's going to be okay today. She's having more checks. So we're thinking of you, Gail, in the group. Thank you. And good to have you here for as long as you can stay on today. Okay. Um, I will just allow people to dial in, mention the housekeeping before we get going. The housekeeping as usual, IVA tonight, uh, which is 5 p.m. Eastern Time US. Because the clocks have gone back already in the UK, for this week only, I think that's 9 p.m. in the UK. So they get a, a, an extra hour's grace. Uh, the US clocks will change next week, I believe. I think it's on the 7th of November. So don't get confused, group members. Uh, you will find the times then go back again uh, to the normal gap. So you should be on your, your normal gap times. Janet Stalin, hi, Janet. So I'm gonna get going. I was hoping uh, today we might get Ingrid on because we have a musical theme. <laughs> Generally wanted to talk about uh, the fact that we're part of a much bigger plan. And you'll understand why I was struck with that thought when I explain uh, what I was looking at this week. Uh, please Janet's on as well, actually, because one particular aspect of this, I think will appeal to her as well. I think it was absolutely fantastic. Anyway, as so as we speak, I'm a great music lover, by the way, as you probably gathered. I, I'm hopeless at it. I love trying to do it, but um, I just love the sounds. I love listening to it. And I, I'm, I have to tell you all that as we speak, one of the longest pieces of music in the world is playing and it will be playing throughout this entire session. And it's called Organ 2 by John Cage, very famous composer. And his instructions for this piece were written on them A.S. L-S-P, not A-S-A-P, A-S-L, S-P, as slow as possible, he meant by that. Now, somebody took this literally, and a group of people got together. They constructed an organ for the purpose. And um, hi, Mandy. So we were just saying the longest piece of music in the world is playing as we speak. And a, a special organ was constructed for the purpose of playing this piece as slow as possible, as the conductor told them, or the composer rather told them, in a church in Germany. The piece actually started playing uh, in, on the 5th of September 2001. Now there are only eight pages of music involved, amazingly. The first chord, the first actual sounds, sounded on the 5th of February 2003 after a rest or silence lasting nearly 18 months. The chord changed again about 15 months later and so on and so on, this will go on. Uh, until this piece, effectively a whole series of changes linked together, notes or events, if I can call them that, which will mean that this piece of music will be played over the next 639 years. Now, I would urge you all, if you get a chance to go online and look at this, because it is quite remarkable, piece of music that started in 2001 that will play continuously for 639 years, Organ 2 by John Cage, being played by a group of enthusiasts on a specially built organ. Now, you heard that correctly, 639 years, eight pages of music or notes, or if I could call them actions, individual actions, these notes, will span 639 years. And that will take us to the year 2640. Unbelievable. Today's session, if we last an hour, will represent 15,597th of the whole piece, or one over 5,597,640. It's mind boggling. This piece will play for the rest of our year, the rest of next year, and throughout the background of anything else we all are likely to do for the rest of our lives. And I've got to tell you, that really, really, really sees my imagination. It just transcended my understanding of existence, of our existence and of time itself. It really opens the mind. It's mind boggling. So here we are, in other words, with one organ and a series of notes forming a composition that will bridge, that will form a bridge of 693, 639 years into our future, the future of our communities. Just imagine the immensity of that. 690, 639 years before 2001 takes us back to 1362. Just imagine what was happening in 14th century life in 1362. And imagine what they would have made of our lives now in the 21st century, 
had they started a piece of music that ended now in our time, in our time. Interestingly, the 14th century and around this date uh, was another period of, of disease, of terrible disease, with the, the many outbreaks of the Black Death or the plague. That was the time of the Black Death or one of them. It was estimated that up to 45% of Europe's population, the whole of the population of Europe, which was most of the um, industrialized or semi-industrialized world at that point, died in those various outbreaks. England and France, by the way, were at war again, Battle of Cressy, and they were and now they're fighting over fish. We're fighting over fish with pens rather than with swords. So nothing changes. As they say in French, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. So nothing changes. Um, so this back to this piece of music, organ two, it's going to play for every second from the 21st century until the 27th century. And by the way, if you thought that was incredible, I then discovered that another piece of music which was being launched in London in the Trinity Boy Lighthouse, an old lighthouse in London, is going to play for a thousand years. It's a whole range of sound bowls. If anyone knows what Buddhist sound bowls are, they're incredible things. These bowls will play in various frequencies and combinations for a thousand years before the piece then starts again. This piece is going to last to the year 3000. <laughs> that really took my breath away. All of this took my breath away. And I think we can draw so many thoughts and you'll probably have a lot of your own differing from mine from this deep well of time, which is how it struck me. It's a deep, deep, deep well of time that we're staring down into 639 years worth of it maybe a thousand years worth of it in the other case. So we, we might think, and I did see some comments to this effect, commenting on this piece, we might think that this makes us and what we do seem small and insignificant, but it struck me in the opposite way. I totally, totally disagree with this. I think it links me straight to the future. And I think it adds to the significance of our actions now because it carries me straight forward to the 27th century and what I do now and what effect that could have. So the consideration of the steps we take now during every second of our part, our small part in this 639 year piece, links up to the impact those steps could actually have on our descendants directly, but on our friends also, our family and our communities. Just think of that. They're going to be there, hopefully, in 2640, the year this piece will end. And in my view, um, it made me think of all our yesterdays as well and what we've already done. And the fact that all our yesterdays, in my view, have written our tomorrows and our tomorrows will write beyond our time. That is what this piece is telling me in this remarkable event that's taking place. Because a sound is like an idea and it can reverberate. We can hear a sound. We can actually memorize it and we can then vocalize it many years later from our memory. So, so it lives again. And we can also memorize and vocalize ideas. So these notes are like ideas. We can store them away, memorize them and vocalize them. That's the importance of looking for those ideas and trying to learn them. So we do, um, we're doing what really matters and what really makes a difference. And what we do now does matter. Everything we do now is going to be stored away and will perhaps have an impact somewhere else on somebody else and on ourselves in our own future. Each act is a note that can be sounded beautifully, in other words, as part of a long lasting composition. And in this case, a composition way beyond our lives. And John talked yesterday when Stuart was on um, about the year end and committing to acting and to being decisive and to being persistent. And we can link together all of these committed, persistent actions into a beautiful bridge in time. It's a beautiful bridge. This bridge can span whole generations and it can bridge build forwards from us being the best we can be, as Stuart put it yesterday, to helping other generations being their best selves in, in their own futures. And a quote uh, then struck me from Paul Songas, who said, we are a continuum. Just as we reach back to our ancestors for our fundamental values, so we, as guardians of that legacy, must reach ahead to our children. And we do so with a sense of sacredness in that reaching. I thought that was an amazing summary of what we're talking about and the impact it can have. Paul Songas, so remember that one. But the supports in this bridge that we're talking about and the annotation on this musical score we're talking about is effectively lifelong learning. This is the theme, the support running through everything. Building our lifelong knowledge carries the load on that bridge 
and it releases the notes from our own score so they can be played. We are what we learn, in my view. And let's invest in that learning too, which is part of the great purpose of this group, of course, and why we all get together and why Mandy hosts the book club to share her ideas on those books we're reading. So let's remember uh, on our journey through that, that knowledge is, is not power. Let's remember that though. Knowledge is not actually power in itself, as we were always told it was at school. Knowledge is only potential power, as Napoleon Hill reminded us. It's potential power. He tells us that it only actually becomes power when it's organized into definite plans of action and directed to a definite end. John talked about all those issues yesterday, directing things to a definite end and persistently doing something. Uh, and so, so did everybody who commented on that call. So lots of thoughts arose from this wonderful piece of music for me today. And I just wanted to remind us of how glorious that journey has really been um, for the mastermind group since we started. And I may read something in a minute if I can dig it out, uh, just to remind myself and all of us about what I said about it at the beginning of this year. So I will attempt to pull that up in a second. Um, but it struck me that given what we've, we've seen with this piece of music, let's just seize the hours today and tomorrow to propel our descendants, their future colleagues and friends and communities forward in 2640, 2640. Seeds planted in those hours that we're talking about may just seem very insignificant to us right now sitting here on this call, but they're not. We're planting them in ground and they, they may appear in forms we can't even imagine, particularly if we're planting good and positive and valid thoughts now creating them, writing them, hosting these videos, speaking all of us, contributing all of us on these calls, our thoughts will reverberate. And even if all we do is to inspire and propel others in this way, that is gonna change the outcome in 2640 in some way we can't even fathom because everything is connected. And we've talked about this before and Stuart gave us some great talks about the universe and energy and how these energies reverberate and rebound and connect together. So just imagine, what several of your actions may produce in the ripples in the future in time in 2640. It's because we didn't focus on that enough in the past that much of the knowledge of our ancestors and their lessons were lost, I'm afraid. So if we can overturn that problem and do something about it, we're gonna have an impact and people will remember what they need to remember that we've learned the hard way that we can help them with. So you are significant and you are a part of a much bigger whole. And that was the theme today. You are part of a much bigger whole. So let's please all of us start today to write our piece of music that may play until the 27th century. Let's do it. As John F. Kennedy said, we must use time as a tool, not as a crutch. And I like that as well. We tend to use time for bad purposes to put things off as somewhere to hide and look at the clock and say, we've got plenty of it. We could turn it around and do something great with it. And we could do something great with it in the sense that it connects us straight to 2640. And who knows what changes we could wreak. So I'm not sure how all this strikes you. I wanted to open up the floor, but you know, something's unfolding right before our eyes and, and in our ears, if we go on and look at it on, on YouTube, that will conclude in 619 years from now. Does that inspire you at all? Does that make you think? Does it make me think? And Turning it around again, can we help anyone here today with any issues that strike them from what we've said? I'd love to hear that as well on the other side of this. So please come out and share your thoughts. And Ali has a hand up. Hi, Ali. Hi, uh, hi. Oh, that is just amazing. I haven't heard of that before. Um, and what strikes me is just how differently that music will be perceived in that century. And I would hope that there is much more, um, and I'm sure there will be because of what's developing even now, awareness of those frequencies and how to tune one's mind into those different frequencies and what they will, the potential of using those frequencies and living continually on those frequencies and tapping into the ones that we require how amazing that is and the knowledge the knowledge I think we will have 
about our brain and our mind and our power of the mind and our energy and and all these energy uh, you know the energy and frequency in the world will be incredible then it's very exciting and that music will just be that that cha the change in perception of human society will just be immense i want to be there <laughs> Me too, me too, Ali, I agree with you. You know, yes, that, that you, you could take a different view that things could be catastrophic, but humanity has always found a way of adapting and learning. And it's just amazing to think of the 14th century, if this piece has started playing then and finished today in our, in our session today. Um, it is mind boggling how they were living and what they knew then and what we've added to that since, sometimes in very short periods. So as you say, it's just incredible to think of the frequencies and the thoughts and the knowledge and the ability that we could have then. It's, it's just incredible. It really, I just felt connected so much to the future at that point. This thing is gonna be there, hopefully playing away all of that time. It just made me feel better about the world, I think. So I'd love to hear anyone else's thoughts. But Ali, I agree with you and do have a look at it, Ali. And if you can go, if you can get to London, to, I think it's in the Docklands. Um, Trinity Boy Lighthouse is where they're playing this thousand year piece in an installation of sound bowls and it will not repeat for a thousand years. So again, you know, how on earth can we get our heads around that? But it makes you think of all sorts of things about our lives and how we're living today and what we're doing with that time. Yeah, so go if you can, everybody. I really, I think it would be a moving experience. I really do. So any other thoughts? Uh, Stuart might be tempted out. He's looking very pensive. And I know he's a great one for the universe and time and the fabric of yeah, time. Hi, Stuart. Crazy. I hadn't heard of this at all. That is amazing. Um, and I missed the first minute or two. So I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you before I made any comments on it. Um, I quickly looked it up as you mentioned it. And um, the uh, the name of the piece is organ too, but it's also called as slow as possible. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. A S L E. He marked it A S L S P, and that was his instruction. And and that's how this came about because it usually lasts about twenty minutes. But a group of enthusiasts took this literally and said, "How slow can we play this thing?" So they're so playing they eight were, pages over six hundred and forty nine years. <laughs> so they took a piece of it and they slowed it down so that it would play for that long, as opposed to this other piece in the lighthouse that you're talking about, that was composed as a thousand year piece and will not yep. repeat for a thousand years. That's unbelievable. And I think they've done it so that it, he he described it as playing six turntables at once. And so they're interacting in ways that won't repeat for a thousand years. So the sounds are not going to be the same and, and overlap until it repeats in a thousand years, which is just incredible. The, the first thing that hits me, I'm sorry, my phone is talking to me here. Um, so, and I, I looked it up a little bit. I don't know if you mentioned this, but the reason why it's gonna, cause that was my first question is, well, what's the significance of 639 years? And I thought it was some mystical, you know, secret number or something like that. And, uh, it had to do with the amount of time from the first installation of the first organ at the Halberstadt Cathedral um, to the year 2000. Is that when they started playing this at 2000? Yes, they, I think they played it in uh, 2001. Fifth, they, I think they were due to start then. It actually started on 5th September 2001. So yes, that ties up, Stuart, very much. Very much and this church Incredible. by the way would have been abandoned and and lost and they they found this church and saved it because it would have had no purpose and crumbled to ruin and been lost so the whole thing and apparently going there is is an incredible spiritual experience because the sounds reverberate around if you can imagine one note playing constantly at a frequency and echoing and bouncing and interacting with itself in a building um it's quite an experience apparently and so if and, anyone can go there was the mm. was the composition for this because Ali you you were talking about frequencies and um, and immediately again I'm thinking that um, this music was composed with an intention of um, broadcasting specific frequencies throughout time into the future. Did 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 John Cage talk at all about the 
the reasons why or the, the composition itself in terms of having an impact or an effect? Or was it more about creating a composition that would just play through a long period of time? I'm going to have to let you down on that, Stuart. I'm going to have to look it up. But what I can tell you is that the previous piece was four minutes 33 and it was total silence. So this man had a lot to say. That's so I will look at the answer to your question, but he he was playing around with these concepts of rests and gaps and sounds, and uh, the piece was meant to last 20, 20 minutes. John, just to make sense of all this for John, uh, we're talking about the permanent installation of a piece of music that started playing in 2001 and will end in the year 2640, 639 years later. And the significance of that in terms of our lives our ability to connect with the future, etc. So we are talking about that today, John, and what you were talking about yesterday as well, in terms of being persistent, decisive, and taking action. The fact that if we do, um, we can create this bridge to 2640 and imagining what could happen through our actions now and what effects we can produce through those. So if anyone gets a chance to look at this, do so. John, you may like to. John Cage, it's a piece called Organ 2. Yeah. And it's playing on an organ that was built specially for the purpose. Uh, in order to achieve the note changes, they swap out the organ pipes every three or four years to change notes. And this is how they're doing it. So amazing, amazing. But, you know, we are not insignificant. That's what I was saying, John. We are more significant than we think because everything we do now is going to have an effect, whether we like it or not, whether we do positive good things or bad things. They will have an effect on someone and something somewhere. And who knows then how they will reverberate during the next 639 years. Um, so anyone else had any thoughts? Stuart, did you have any more thoughts on that? But it is, it is, you know, in terms of the universe and time and all the talks you've given really makes one thing. Well, yeah. And you just, you just hit on something about um, whether they, uh, that, that this music you made an analogy, and maybe Ali to to our to our thoughts um, and our actions that uh, go out into the universe and reverberate, you know, for infinity kind of thing, and have impacts. Um, and you you mentioned whether we wanted to or not, <clears throat> and and I would even add whether we whether we're aware of that or not. And I think what's cool is that John Cage is is doing this intentionally to to reach out and touch the future, right? And I think that's super cool. Um, and me, you know, when I think about like, oh, it's 639 years, what a, what a really long time immediately. Um, well, the first thing I think of is uh, the gold record that they put on the Voyager, right? Do you remember the Voyager probe, right? And they sent that out into space and it has uh, just recently left our solar system, right? To, to have contact or to um, communicate with, uh, with people, you know, potentially light years away, things like that. But then I, you know, I think about, wow, 639 years. Then I think about um, Glenn and, uh, and Star Trek, right? Because if you, if you know uh, about Star Trek and the, the timeline of the Federation, right? I think it's like the 25th century or something like that. And so um, there is this concept of, well, th this music will be playing, um, you know, for Captain Kirk and, and Mr. Spock, right? And that, that's pretty interesting to me. But then, of course, I think about the, the, the long cycles of time in, in um, astronomical cycles, right? And, and uh, the, the 2160 uh, year cycles of the uh, precession of the equinoxes and the time it takes for all the constellations to come back to the same place in the sky, um, the 13,000 year cycles of axial precession and the wobble of the planet and how long it takes for the earth to come back to its same place and the long cycles of the Mayan calendar and all these kinds of things. And when I look at that, I'm like, oh, 600 years, eh, not a big deal, right? Um, and then what was it, Janet put something in the, in the comment box about, um, that he's being optimistic about, uh, you know, there being humans to <laughs> to listen to this uh, in the future. Um, all very interesting, man. It's super cool. What a what a surprise and what a what an interesting concept. So yeah, I've got some things to wrap my head around today. Thanks, man. Me too, Stuart. Me too.
And uh, as John Kennedy said, as I just uh, mentioned, uh, we must use time as a tool, not as a crutch. Which is, which is a good one for us, John, really, in terms of making good use of that time. Don't use it as an excuse, as a mode of procrastination, use it as a tool. So I, I thought that was, that was another timely reminder, but forgive the pun, but literally a timely reminder of what we shouldn't do with our time. And we've been talking about that this week, and you've been talking about it in the book club in terms of habits and using time well. And you did the next session last night, I think, so that's recorded. For anyone that's watching this, there's a link on the site, the John Lavinia Success Mastermind site, which I believe takes you to the book club. Uh, John is making that available to people. Um, and I don't know if anyone had any more thoughts on this. I was going to read, I was going, John, you coming out to have thoughts on this? Or uh, I will just read out. This, this made me think very much of the journey that we're on and this whole concept of journey and time. And something I actually wrote about the group for the group, which you might remember me posting at the beginning of the year, which I was reminded of in thinking of this span of time and this music and uh, where we might be by the end of next year and, and what we've done together already. And I just wanted to read it out, if I may, if you can bear with me. So I called it in celebration of the JLSM. And it goes as follows. I stood staring at the sea, uncertain, crossing the threshold of the new year, from the dark to the light. But now we are a multitude, sharing joy and walking tall. As we progress through life's passages, know this, we are now joined together, one, sharing defeat and joy, scaling peaks innumerable, uncovering smiles and opening souls, progressing towards our ultimate goals. Long live joy and long live togetherness as we, the multitude progress. And I really do think that this group generates a massive amount of joy and positivity and energy. So long may that last, long may that last. I don't know if anyone else had any thoughts on the group and what they've got out of it, what they think they've put into it, but I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear from you. It's going to be a very short session otherwise. I'll, John. I'll just say something just in, in um, response to your prose that you just recited thank you for that uh because that was you know bigger picture kind of stuff uh, and i will say this we're looking forward but uh, in retrospect i also think sometimes um well i guess the point is i don't think about it like what effect did i have on that person who heard my lecture 20 something years ago who then found me again on social media a couple of decades later and said, you know, it was this thing that, you know, next thing I, I've had this multiple times where people said, my life is completely different. I had one and this is, I'm not, I'm not self aggrandizing. I'm just kind of acknowledging and corroborating that all of us have an effect long into the future or, or can, whether or not we recognize it. But I had this, this one guy contact me just a couple months ago from 25 years ago when I did some counseling work at an adolescent uh, drug rehab recovery center. And, and he remembered me of all the people and the counselors and the people that he confronted as he was looking to get his life in order and stop putting drugs in his body and you know, essentially killing himself. And now he's got a farm, family, wife, kids, sanity. And, it, and it, you know, he sought me out and cited you know, some of the stuff that I had I guess, confronted him on, I, I don't know, remember the exact words, you know, from <clears throat> 25 or however many years ago, but uh, apparently it had an impact. So, and that's just current lifetime, right? That's not, I mean, we're talking about in the, you know, the track of time that spans eons, you know, here's a 20 something years, a blip, a blip. Um, what was that book by um, Joel Goldsmith, A Parentheses in Eternity? Um, I don't know if uh, Stuart's nodding. I said, yes. So Joel Goldsmith was kind of like a modern day apostle. He talked about like the spiritual discernment of scripture, not to intellectualize it, but more a spiritual discernment. And, and he, he talked in a way that, um, that, had, that gave the reader or the listener considerations about how big, how big this actually is, you know. So here we are talking about, you know, let's say, for example, this Christianity thing for the last couple of thousand years. It's big, right? Bigger than a couple of thousand years. 
So anyway, food for thought. Thank you, um, Adrian. And sorry, I was late to the conversation. I am phones ringing off the hook, total madness, just total insanity, which is exactly the way I like it. Oh my goodness, I'm so great. Right. <laughs> That's great, John. No, look, great to have you here. And you know, no, you are having an impact and you always have done, and you've passed that on to a lot of people in the group. So the baton is being handed down the line. And we've all got to get out there because as I said during the talk, we are writing people's tomorrows quite literally. And we're changing them. And we can change them. I think there is some uh, defeatist language sometimes in some quarters saying there's nothing we can do we can't change anything well we can actually we can change things and what we do is is going to have an impact so we are the positive force that has to get out there and put the positive message out there's plenty of negative messaging out there but there is plenty of positive messaging too and Ali has a hand up again Ali yeah just on that on that topic I, I think last year and the last 18 months have been an incredible example of how universal energy can affect us because the amount of fear that was pumped in to the whole world over the last 18 months and the negativity and the focus on death and what that did to the world um, just shows you the power of it of our collective universal mind and so therefore how important the responsibility is to make sure that we are putting out positive energy. Well, Ali, mm -hmm. absolutely, you know, absolutely. And you're quite right. And we talked about this a lot during John's sessions in the first period of the JSL and during all the lockdowns and the terrible press that was pumping up. John actually said, just switch the, switch the news off. Don't even look at it because things were so ridiculously overblown and totally negative that it did people a lot of damage. I mean, if, um, if you set one lemming running towards a cliff, they all run off it and kill themselves. They all follow the one in front. And uh, it's very easy to get into this mass media overhyped negativity very, very quickly. There are so, so many negative loops nowadays. Of course, it sells news. Negative bad stories sell the news. Uh, okay, it's a business. They're in business. But we have to be smart enough to uh, create our own positive thoughts, as you say, Ali, and be collectively positive. And we can certainly do that in the group. And I think taking it, even the members of this group, we can touch thousands of people, thousands, tens of thousands. If you look at all our connections, even the unknown ones, probably more. So we can reverberate across time and across today, uh, not just tomorrow. So let, let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. We're trying to help each other. We, we can do more than that. John definitely is doing that. He's widely, widely seen already over many decades. So that's great, John. That's wonderful. Anyway, any, any further contributions as we'll, we'll wrap up otherwise. Um, housekeeping wise, don't forget EVA tonight, corporate curios, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time US. The English clocks have gone back already. So it's 9 p.m. only for this week uh, in the UK. So any, any UK listeners this week, check your calendar because your clocks have gone back. The US clocks do not go back, I believe, until the 7th of November. Therefore, you're going to have a shorter time lag this week than normal so it's 9 p.m uk time eva tonight 5 p.m eastern time as usual in the us and eva is going to deliver one of her brilliant sessions as usual and hope to see you on that so um if there are no further thoughts and it's great to see you i have to say stuart back on some of these calls we really have missed you all of us and we have these incredible memories of some of your talks letting the cat out of the bag the universe your description of the cosmos, etc., were landmarks for sure. So uh, we hope one day to hear another one, perhaps as a Christmas special, who knows? We'll get you in a Sandra outfit and uh, you can deliver us a great talk. Anyway, so uh, I, I've had a lot of, lot of fun today talking, and I tell you what, a, a 639 piece of music and a 1,000 year piece of music made me think and made me try and get to grips with what we have to do. So thank you all. Great to be here. John Levina, Success Mastermind, General Session, 2nd of November 2021 already. So we'll see you all later, hopefully on EVA's uh, talk. Bye for now. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you, Adrian. <laughs> thank you. Bye.